Hi, this is Eloy Ortiz Oakley. Welcome back to The Rant, the podcast where we pull back the curtain and break down the people, the policies, and the politics of our higher education system. Today, we're hanging out here at ASU GSV down in San Diego, and I've had a chance to meet with several innovative thinkers, people who, have, who are creating solutions for learners across this country, uh, and a lot of new innovations in the space of opening up access to post-secondary education for more Americans. So today I'm joined by a special guest. His name is Manny Smith, and he is the founder and CEO of Advisorly. And so welcome to the podcast, Manny. Thank, thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for taking the time. I know how busy you are in a conference like this, um, continuing to push and to get in front of people, talk about what you're doing. But before we get into exactly what you're doing here at ASU GSV, tell us a little bit about your journey. Tell us about your education journey and what led you to um, start a company like Advisorly. That's a great question. So I believe that the founder journey matters the most. Mm -hmm. So for all founders out there, especially founders that come from, I would say, founders of color, mm -hmm. a lot of conviction matters. Um, I was... Uh, born in California and raised in Georgia to two parents who didn't go to college. They didn't have a single credit mm -hmm. between both of them. Uh, navigating how to apply for college was a challenge. Um, we went to public schools and I come from humble beginnings. Um, my family on my father's side had served in the United States military for a really long time. Um, mm -hmm. My dad also uh, was army enlisted. And uh, my mom, on her side, they immigrated to the United States, you know, at the time I was exploring college, less than 100 years before that. Right. So for me, you know, there was no legacy or history of going to college. Right. I mean, it was, you know, it was try to figure it out yourself. But I, I was blessed, in the, especially in the community, that I spent most of my youth and have two parents. I was blessed that they helped me focus on getting good grades, which really set me up in high school Um to, to do well on standardized tests, which we both know how we feel about. <laughs> yes. Um, but I think our listeners know how I feel about standardized tests. <laughs> I feel the same way. So, um, yeah, hopefully we don't, we don't go off on that yet. But I, I think uh, most importantly, it was the, uh, the journey to college was not linear for me. Mm -hmm. So I was in my second semester senior year. I had no idea if I was going to go to college, if I could afford to go to college. Um, and I was uh, blessed and fortunate to be offered a sports scholarship uh, to play football at the United States Air Force Academy. Wow, that's great. And I'll never forget the day. It was January 8th, 2008. Um, uh, Coach Charlton Warren came in and uh, watched my tape, offered me a football scholarship. I didn't think it was real. I had imposter syndrome. Right. Um, but apparently I was, you know, somewhat of an undiscovered athlete. Thereafter, I got offered from the Naval Academy as well as a wow. number of other schools that I didn't consider because those are the two institutions that would pay me a stipend and give mm -hmm. me the structure that I needed, um, right. as well as had the support systems for a first gen student uh, in my, you know, in my experience to be successful. So I went to Air Force um, mostly because I watched too much Top Gun <laughs> and um, thought I had a better shot to fly. Um, wanted to be a fighter pilot. I ended up being a, an engineer and um, or a technical product manager developing mm -hmm. satellite systems for national defense. Wow. So after Air Force Academy, I commissioned as an active duty officer. Um, I did track and football at Air Force and um, then went on to develop space systems and, uh, and then eventually software. Uh, in between, I had a deployment. I went to uh, Al-Udid Air Base in uh -huh. Qatar um, and uh, learned a lot, had a great time. And uh, I had a really awesome guy who was a mentor of mine. He was mm -hmm. a successful entrepreneur. He was working with California Community Colleges. Wow. And uh, he invited me to the CSSO conference, um, <laughs> which is for all the vice presidents of student services right. in California Community College. My first take was, why would I go to a community college conference? I'm building technology for the military. Mm -hmm. And then he told me that he was a transfer student. Right. And um, so it opened my eyes to what a community college was. And for, for me, I started to reflect, not everyone gets to be a military officer. Not everyone gets to go right. to the Air Force Academy or play sports. But many can go to community college, and that's what over 6 million people in the United States are doing right. with the hope to then move on to a four-year university. Right. So naturally, I, um, my heart was torn in the direction of supporting and building a, um, a company focused on helping. I, shouldn't, I should actually back, backtrack that word because mm -hmm. I don't help anyone, but we illuminate the path for students. So illuminate right. the path right. for community college students to go to institutions that will actually embrace 
uh, the community college transfer student. So I, I separated from active duty, joined the reserves, mm -hmm. and uh, went to UC Berkeley for graduate school where I founded Advisorly and met wow. a couple of awesome teammates, Hannah and Lizzie, and, and we were off to the races. That's great. Well, I really appreciate your, your story, Manny, because it's, it's a story of lots of people in this country all, all across from coast to coast. I mean, I had a very similar story. Although, I, interestingly enough, um, I was recruited to go to the U.S. Um, Army Military Academy. Um, but I didn't go. I didn't go. I didn't go to college right out of high school. I went and joined the Army as an enlisted person. And, and it would always um, stick in me that, you know, some, somebody with a bar on their hat was telling me what to do. And the only difference between him and me was a piece of paper, a college degree. Yep. And that's what motivated me to go into community colleges after I got out of the military. So I really appreciate your, your story because I think those are the kinds of stories that lead people to want to create a, a better world, a better path, a better environment for the kind of people that, you know, we grew up around. So, so how, how is um, uh, Ad Advisorly going? And tell us what exactly are you trying to, to do with this uh, uh, startup? Yeah, so Advisorly is going really well. And just in short, Advisorly is building a nationwide transfer platform to connect transfer-friendly four-year universities with community college students that have aspirations to complete their bachelor's degree. Uh -huh. So, you know, like any startup, there's a lot of challenges early on. And I think one of the biggest challenges for us was really assessing and evaluating what is true and what is not in higher education. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as we know, there's a, there are bureaucratic layers and there's a lot of rhetoric. Um, so we took a we, we took an approach to study the actions of people mm -hmm. who are in higher education and very simply put, who will join the platform and who will be part of this movement. Um, when you really think about what we're building, a lot of people say things like the non-traditional student. Right. And they use words like the non-traditional student. When in reality, when you when you reflect on what higher education has been for generations, higher education actually has embraced the non-traditional student. The student who comes from a foundation that's extremely established, usually mm -hmm. of privilege, legacies into a school, right. and is told that they're going to go get a four-year degree. When you look at how many students are actually in community college, that is actually the traditional pathway. Right. That's the traditional pathway. And so when we think of what Advisorly actually is, Advisorly is a representation of what America should be, which is an institution mm -hmm. that allows merit-based capacity that allows you to pull yourself up by your bootstrap. You can't do that if you're a bootless person. And right. right now, when we think about community college to university transfer, historically, there hasn't been a boot for a community college student to pull themselves up by. And there's there's too many moments that are driven by luck mm -hmm. instead of by actual merit and opportunity. And right. so what we're doing is we're illuminating pathways to our partner universities and help mm -hmm. and, and really focusing on that sense of belonging where students understand the resources associated with transfer. It's mm -hmm. not just an articulation agreement. <laughs> if we only lean on articulation agreements as the, as the sole interface mm -hmm. to help students transfer, then we're, then we're doing them a massive disservice. Right. So. Well, you, um, you pulled a couple of threads there that I want to come back to first, this notion of traditional versus non-traditional students. I mean, the reality in America is that less than 40%, certainly less than half, but somewhere around 40% of people enrolled in a post-secondary institution are 18 to 24 year olds. So the reality is they are the non-traditional student. They're not the majority of students. The majority of students, you know, somewhere around 60% are, are older learners, um, students who are going part-time working, raising families, not going to your traditional residential college experience. So, and these are the students who want to transfer. These are the students who are taking a different, are not taking the 40% approach. They're the ones who have the least amount of information. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about articulation agreements, it is about information. It's about accessing information that's clear, that's concise, and that you can follow along a path. I mean, you, both of us are former military, we know how important it is to have a plan of action, um, and we're trained to follow that plan. Mm -hmm. When I was a student in community colleges, you know, somebody handed me a clear pathway on how to transfer to UC Irvine because UC Irvine needed enrollment at the time. 
They don't anymore, but at the time, they had these guaranteed pathways. And so that has always stuck with me. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like what you're doing is trying to create that clear plan for people of all backgrounds to be able to help them navigate. Absolutely. And I think the most important thing is to understand that there's various archetypes of students mm -hmm. that build relationships in very different ways. And so when when you were likely going from community college to, you know, UC Irvine, it was, you know, there were a lot of in-person interaction. I mean, right. even the way I grew up, like I, I remember a world before Google, <laughs> before this thing <laughs> was sitting in our hand and glued to our hand. Uh, so, yes, I didn't have a cell phone when I went <laughs> right. to college. But. Yeah, I didn't either when I first went to college. Um but I, I think one of the most important, actually I did, I'd, I'd gotten one just before, <laughs> just before I went. Um, but I think the most important thing is to, to consider all the different archetypes of students and mm -hmm. who we're supporting. Right. So, you know, when we built and designed Advisorly, we understood that th there needs to be different experiences depending on the type of student. But most importantly, the student needs to be able to build relationships the way that they do in today's world. Mm -hmm. In today's world, we have LinkedIn, right. we have Instagram, we have YouTube, we have you know, some people have TikToks. And so we've kind of revolutionized this concept of only focusing on articulation agreements to say there mm -hmm. also needs to be an exploratory experience around resources, around right. senses of belonging, around what does that actually, that university offer students that is mm -hmm. part of the intangible value, the communities that students can be part of when they go to that university. Mm -hmm. If the student identifies as Latino, is it a Hispanic serving institution? Because right. maybe that's what they're looking for. Is it a faith-based institution? Mm -hmm. But at its core, Advisorly is bringing together and standardizing the concept of transfer um, so that students can have a single resource that they can go to that's reliable and trustworthy mm -hmm. with committed institutions that will support them. And we do mm -hmm. not prof, uh, work with for-profit institutions. Well, that's good to know. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, so is, is part of the solution here creating also um, networks of individuals who are trying to follow similar paths? Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. You, you, uh, you might have our product roadmap in front of you, but <laughs> <laughs> the uh, cat's, cat's out of the bag. Absolutely. So this summer, we're going to be working on connecting students to students ah, great. so that they can build that sense of community as they think about transfer, especially um, when you think about specialized institutions mm -hmm. where a student may otherwise not be able to find that sense of community. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we just partnered with Mount St. Mary's. Right. Mostly they're focused on like, you know, enrolling women. Right. Unless it's their evening and online program. So how do we think about women who are most likely faith-based or interested in a faith-based institution connecting mm -hmm. with others and also then, you know, moving into Mount St. Mary's together? We know that community is really important in everything that we do. Right. So as we think about that, the most important thing is that we invite leaders to the table to make ethical decisions about how we use this information with students and, and the data and make those connections. Mm -hmm. Ethics really matters. And um, as we continue to build, we're very fortunate to have partnered with Lumina Foundation, ECMC mm -hmm. Foundation, Strata Education Network, um, as well as um, our current institutional investors who actually are very, very aligned with us on how do we think about the ethics behind what we're doing. We have That's impact great. metrics as well. So. So, um, you know, one of the things in my experience um, that I've seen is, is a challenge for transfer students is this, this notion of, you know, you're hanging out at a community college campus, you got to know the campus, you got to know the people, you got to know the faculty, and all of a sudden you're thrust on a big four-year university campus. And, you know, your uh, graduate school alma mater is a great example, UC Berkeley. Um, it's really tough for a transfer student to land on a campus like UC Berkeley and, and not have all the information that, say, freshman admits have about the institution. How, how do you think about helping students when they land on a college campus, ensuring that they're successful? A lot of the advisory experience is about helping that student really understand what that institution is before mm -hmm. they get there. Right. And so one of the biggest challenges or that has been a challenge in the past was phantom applications, mm -hmm. which is a community college student just applying to a four-year university because, you know, they, you know, did their journey. They did maybe an articulation agreement pathway. They never right. really corresponded with the institution. They never felt like the institution wanted to correspond with them. Right. And so I think the most important thing is that they feel that sense that the institution wants them there. And mm -hmm. so really through the advisory platform, we work to curate that experience. And we actually 
do counsel and advise a lot of our partner universities on how to even think about the messaging and outreach that they do for students, right. about the things that get students engaged, because we see the engagement for the students on the platform. We mm -hmm. know the things that they want to see. And so when we get to work with, with uh, enrollment teams and universities, we really, really see it as a partnership. And to, to kind of like, you know, take that a step further, there's no such thing as partnering with Advisorly and being removed from the pl platform. Mm -hmm. If you actually have students who have pathways to your institution, it, it really very much is kind of like a marriage. You know, <laughs> if there's 10 students on the platform that want to go to your school, that dream of going to your institution, we're going to know it. Mm -hmm. And so then it becomes the relationship that we have with the enrollment team to think about right. addressing those students and supporting them. So mm -hmm. it's really exciting for us. So you mentioned something in your original description of how you partner, and you mentioned um, transfer-friendly universities. I mean, just the fact that you have to say that. I mean, you would think that every four-year university would be transfer-friendly, that would want the kind of talent and diversity that come from a community college campus. But how, how, do, you, how do you define uh, the kind of partners you want to work with in your four-year university partners? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I wish that were true, that every university would consider that the backbone of American education is community college, that mm -hmm. when you think about truly creating a nation that, you know, every, that every student can have the opportunity to mm -hmm. succeed, um, community college should be a, not an afterthought, but a first thought. Mm -hmm. um, all men are created equal. <laughs> Um, when I think of a transfer-friendly four-year university, it has less to do with prestige and more to do with an institution of access, and it's all relative. Right. So traditionally, highly selective institutions can be a little bit more, um, they might seem harder to partner with, but it really mm -hmm. comes down to the team. Mm -hmm. The enrollment teams that we like to work with are the ones that are, that lean into the concept of access and equity, and that actually will work with us to understand the perspective of the students that, that they'll enroll. Right. Now, I will say that we have to work on behalf of the enrollment teams as well. So the enrollment teams, the vice presidents of enrollment, they do have objectives that they have to meet, but it's our job to communicate those truths to students. And mm -hmm. if we partner with an institution like a community college or a transfer center director, making sure that they have the most relevant, updated, timely information, because that stuff changes year over year, Mm -hmm. And there's no way for every transfer center director in America to know right. what, what every single university's enrollment initiatives are this year. They change right. all the time. But it is good if we have that relevant information to be able to arm those transfer center directors and the teams at the community colleges mm -hmm. if they do want to partner with us. So right. again, focusing on um, bringing forward the most motivated individuals in the space that want to continue to lean into creating opportunities and those lucky moments for students. Right. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about you. You know, you're um, a relatively still young uh, founder and entrepreneur. Um, given all the challenges that we've heard about in the news lately, the uh, near collapse of SVB, the challenges um, in the interest rate environment, um, accessing capital, how has that been impacting you and and your company? And and what kind of partners do you seek to help you keep going? That's a great question. Um, we're very fortunate that we had a really successful funding round last year. Mm -hmm. um, we brought in um, sufficient capital to operate and you know, more than enough over the next year for Advisorly. And I would say also the growth that we've seen in the first quarter, we brought on Texas Tech University, wow. Emerson College, great. Hawaii Pacific University, Mount St. Mary's, the University of Denver, um, we brought on uh, Los Angeles Pacific University, which is our online partner, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, uh, University of Arkansas Fort Smith. Um, and in Q2, we expect to bring on 20 more partner universities. So, That's great. in terms of growth, we have a lot of growth happening right now at Advisorly. So that so that kind of hedges us from a lot of the economic conditions that are happening. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say for any new entrepreneur thinking about getting into a space and specifically in education, mm -hmm. the most important thing is to surround yourself with practitioners that are doing the things that you hope to, to, to create in the world. Mm -hmm. So as an entrepreneur, my job is not to be anything more than a medium for which others 
can achieve their objectives. Mm -hmm. And so a student can achieve their objectives of transfer because I can go find a VP of enrollment who wants to achieve their objectives of enrolling a student mm -hmm. from community college. Mm -hmm. um, similarly, if a transfer center director wants to positively impact the lives of students, mm -hmm. they can um, work with us to help work with their students. Mm -hmm. So I think the most important thing is to consider why we're doing things and to do it with a sense of conviction. Right. To work really, really, really hard and understand that nothing comes easy. Right. That you have to do all of the jobs in the company if you have to. <laughs> to have integrity behind that, like military style. Right. Um, and to have extreme discipline. Um, I watch Kobe Bryant videos every day. <laughs> um, and the, the mentality that I took from the military and from sports, right. uh, being able to play football and run track at Air Force Academy is the same that I take to advisorly. All right. Well, Mamba forever. Yeah. So um, as we begin to wrap up, uh, we're here at ASU GSV. What what excites you about hanging out at ASU GSV? Anything interesting that you're seeing going yeah. on? Yeah. Well, this was the most exciting part of it for me. <laughs> um, I I was uh, competing with a sale, uh, a conference, a university conference, um, and I would say the most interesting thing is having come to these conferences in the past years years in the past, um, coming here and seeing the familiar faces and just knowing that you know with consistency and dedication we've brought on some of the top foundations and. Right being able to see kind of the progress that Advisorly has been able to make year over year and just knowing that next year we're going to make even more progress and, you know, have just thousands more students we're going to be able to work with and support. And um, I think that's the most exciting part of ASU GSV. Well, that's great. Manny, thanks for taking the time to join us here on The Rant. I appreciate you being with us and appreciate the work that you guys are doing. Thank you. Thanks very much. All right. Um, thanks for joining us here on The Rant. We've been listening to my conversation with Manny Smith. Uh, look forward to more conversations while I'm here at ASU GS3. So we'll be back with you shortly with more episodes of The Rant.